Science Museum of Minnesota is celebrating Earth Day's birthday, sharing info, fun activities, challenges for citizen scientists of all ages. WCCO.com slash links will get you there. Earth Day, great time to incorporate some learning into your kid's day. That doesn't have to be boring. We Skyped with our kitchen pantry scientists to find out some fun ways to celebrate. Liz, thanks so much for joining us here today. I'm happy to be here. Nice to see you. So we know everybody's been staying at home. Uh, how many books have you written so far here? Uh, I'm working on two right now, actually. I'm That's under a lot of deadlines, so <laughs> I'm just writing, writing, writing. The, the rest of us feel like major underachievers here, Liz. <laughs> I have written zero books during this time. Uh, Earth Day yeah, today. No, you, you guys don't do anything. Yeah, no, that's true. Okay, Earth Day today, and I know you have a couple experiments specifically designed to get kids and parents talking about the Earth. I do, and I'm going to um, kick things off talking about an experiment from my new book, Chemistry for Kids, which comes out in less than two weeks. I'm super excited. But this is an experiment you can do at home that um, teaches kids about chemical dispersion, and that is the way that chemicals um, move through the environment. So, you know, if you put stuff on your lawn, if stuff goes into a lake, it moves through the water, it moves through the soil. And Rachel Carson, who was the author of the environmental movement, um, was the first person to really talk about the importance of this when she noted that um, she wrote a book called Silent Spring because DDT that they were spraying on mosquitoes was killing all the songbirds and she couldn't hear the birds in the spring. So um, to do this experiment, you just take some plain gelatin, you melt it, you put it in a dish, then you use a straw. I have my environmentally friendly metal straw Very here. Good, yes. <laughs> You use a straw to poke holes in the gelatin, and this is on my website. You poke holes in the gelatin, then you put food coloring into the holes, and you can see how the food coloring disperses, how it moves from the areas where it's concentrated in the gelatin out into the gelatin. And um, you can actually cut a little pretend stream into your gelatin and then put water in it. And kids can see how the food coloring will move then from the oh. gelatin even into the water. So it's a cool experiment that demonstrates why you have to be careful about what chemicals you put into the environment mm -hmm. because they don't usually stay in one place. Mm -hmm. Right. It also looks cool. You got a little water and <laughs> land situation I know, going on there. Yeah, I love it. All right. What's going on with the candles here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's fun for kids to think about weather, right? Our environment is affected a lot by the weather. And we live under a giant swimming pool of air, gases, right, that push on us all the time, which is called atmospheric pressure. So one thing you can do um, to see the power of atmospheric pressure is to use it to push hard-boiled eggs into a bottle. So I'm just lighting some candles that are stuck in the bottom of hard-boiled eggs. I have a couple of empty juice bottles here. And we can see that combustion, burning is a chemical reaction, right? We can see that as the oxygen's used up, the candles will go out. Whoa. Whoa. And the eggs will How cool. pop up into the bottle. Come on, that's, that is fantastic. So kids, <laughs> this is really cool. My dad just told me about this. You can download free barometer apps on your phone that show you how atmospheric pressure is changing. So kids can keep track of it. And as a thunderstorm is rolling in, if they check the weather, they see a storm is rolling in, they can watch the millibars, which is the unit of measurement for atmospheric pressure. They can watch the millibars drop on their um, cell phone barometer as storms roll in, and they can even keep a weather notebook. Cool. Mm -hmm. So, also so oh, and this is cool too. If you take one of these barometers, you put it in a plastic bag, seal the bag, and squeeze the bag really hard. You can, oh, wow. I don't know if you can oh. see this, but you can yeah. actually watch. Wow. Look at it go. As the oh, pressure wow. in the bag increases, you can see the barometric measurement drop. Cool. So that, what are these beautiful that's a bracelets? Weather science experiment. Wait, what are these beautiful bracelets over here on the side? Okay, this is duct tape. I love this project because everyone's been out a lot with their kids, right? Walking around, walking around. So kids can take duct tape and adults. I actually like doing this too. Put it inside out on their wrist and make nature walk bracelets is what I call it. But as you're walking with your kids or if by yourself, collect little things. Like right now the bluebells are blooming, right? Yeah. But as, as spring um, comes on, more and more plants will emerge, flowers will emerge. 
you can stick them on as you're walking, collect them, and then when you get home, you can um, try to identify them. There are lots of cool apps for identifying leaves and flowers. Cool. Yeah. Um, and seeds, you know, there'll be lots of seeds falling off trees, but it's a really fun way to um, incorporate a little um, a little art and fashion into your there science, you yeah. there you science oh, projects for Earth love Day. That one. Good stuff, Liz. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thanks. That was fun, right? You can see more of Liz's experiments at her website, wccr.com slash links, and we'll get you there.